I'm sorry to let you know, but you've been using the wrong archive format. And no, I'm not exaggerating. If you're on Linux and you're still zipping files, you're torching your permissions, mangling your sim links, and hoping for the best, to be honest. So let's sort this out. Tar, zip, tar zip, and 7-zip. What are they? Why do they exist? And which one should you actually be using? Let's start with the one everyone knows, zip. Born in 1989, back when mullets were fashionable and DOS was king, zip does archiving and compression in one hit. You bundle your files, shrink them down, easy to unpack later. Simple. The real selling point though is the random access. You can rip out a single file out of a zip without extracting the whole archive. That's why it became king of Windows. Double click, extract, done. But here's the kicker. Zip was built for Windows and Windows doesn't care about things like ownership, permission or sim links. And yeah, I know, the spec technically allows for Unix metadata, but almost nothing actually uses it. So if you zip up a folder on Linux and you unzip it later, congratulations! You've just wrecked half the important stuff and your system's crying and it's all your fault. And this is where most people stop listening because they think zip is good enough. Stick around because tar is about to make zip look like a toy. Now, tar. This thing goes all the way back to the 1970s. It literally stands for tape archive. That's how old it is. It was designed for streaming files straight onto a magnetic tape. No compression, just one big sequence stream of files. But here's why Unix people love it. Tar preserves everything. Permissions, ownerships, timestamps, sim links, device nodes, all the weird Unix magic that Zip completely ignores. And if you care about files being identical when they come back out, Tar is definitely your friend. And because it's sequential, you can pipe it anywhere. You want to move an entire file system over SSH? Tar's got you. Right, try that with Zip, I'll, I'll just wait. And no, but it works on Windows, it doesn't count because in Unix land, broken permissions are broken systems. Okay, so tar by itself doesn't compress. That's where gzip comes in. Gzip showed up in the early 90s and it uses the deflate algorithm. And it simply just takes one file and makes it smaller. That's it, it doesn't do anything else. So what happens when you combine tar and gzip? You get a tar.gz or a tar.gz or a tgz if you're lazy. Here's the twist. The combo is so powerful, it basically became law in Linux. You can't escape it. And this combo is everywhere. Why? Because TGZ gives you the best of both worlds. Tar keeps all your metadata intact and gzip squashes the whole bundle down so it's actually portable. The result? A smaller, faithful copy of your data that you can sling across your network, back up or publish as a software package. This is why Linux distros, Docker images and pretty much every open source project under the sun ships as a tar.gz. It's the standard and if you're doing anything serious on Linux and you're still zipping files, you are doing it wrong. So let's break down why TGZ beats zip. TGZ preserves Unix metadata. Zip breaks it. TGZ usually compresses text heavy data better than zip. TGZ can be streamed directly over pipes and networks. Zip can't. And in the Linux and Unix world, tar.gz is just expected. Try sending a zip to a hardcore sysadmin and watch them roll their eyes. And don't even think about sending me a zip file if you want me to take you seriously. Now, what about 7-zip? This one came later, in, uh, in, in the 90s I think it was, uh, and it came from the 7-zip project. Instead of deflate, it uses LZMA and LZMA2, which are absolute beasts of compression. That means smaller files, sometimes way smaller than TGZ or ZIP. And like ZIP, 7-zip also has an index, so you can yank out individual files without unpacking the whole thing. It sounds pretty perfect, right? Uh, but not quite. 7-zip is way slower and it's not also installed by default on most systems and compatibility is not really universal but if you're archiving giant databases and disk space is precious 7-zip is definitely the move fun fact a lot of hackers use 7-zip for all of their leaks and dumps because well they want the smallest upload possible and yes if you ever grabbed a leaked database off some sketchy forum it was probably wrapped in 7-zip all right, quick recap so this sticks. Zip, cross-platform, random access, final windows but breaks Linux metadata. Tar, keeps everything intact, perfect for Unix, stream friendly, no compression though. Gzip, just compression, fast and universal. TGZ, the Linux gold standard. Tar's fidelity plus Gzip's compression. And then 7-zip, maximum compression, random access, but slower and less widely supported. 
See, the file extension alone tells you who packed it, a sysadmin, a developer, or a hacker. So the next time you see a zip, a tar, a tgz, or a 7-zip, you'll know exactly what's inside, why it's packaged that way, and which one you should trust. And hey, if you want me to pit these formats against each other in a proper test, speed, file size, metadata preservation, and actually crown a winner, drop a comment and I might just make it happen.